go. Hello, class. This is a video on intersecting planes from C3 and C4. So, in class, we talked about how two planes can intersect. And we can have a plane like this, and then an intersecting plane that I don't really know how to draw. And they'll intersect in a line. You can think about it like the two planes are going like this, and they're intersecting like right in this line here. So they're intersecting right along this line. Okay, Sydney. So you have two planes, and they can intersect in a line. That's one option. That's the intersecting option. Intersecting planes will always intersect in a line. Or you can have planes that don't intersect. No, <laughs> no intersection. So that would be like two parallel planes, so they never cross. Or two coincident planes, like right on top of each other. And the important thing to know about these ones is that they're normal vectors. They're normal vectors for both planes will be the same. They'll have the same normal vector or a scalar multiple of their normal vectors. So, yeah, so that's the first thing we can check. So on our first plane, we'll check out our normal vector. Here's an example. I am. So our normal vector is 2, negative 1, 1. 2, negative 1, 1. And in our second plane, our normal vector is 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1, 1. So now I can tell just by looking at these that they're not scalar multiples and they're not the same normal vectors. So if I were to multiply the red one by 2, I'd get the same x coordinate but not the same y and z. Okay, so I've canceled out. They're definitely going to intersect. These two planes are going to intersect in a line. So let's find the equation of that line. Okay, so we're trying to, our goal is we want to um, find the vector equation of the line where they intersect. Okay, so remember our vector equation looks like this. It's a point, x naught, y naught, z naught, so some point, plus um, a direction vector. Um, and if you notice, there's a parameter here in our equation, and that's going to come into play when we find the intersection. Okay, so we're trying to find the intersection of these two lines. I mean of these two planes. Um, so, we want to like kind of sub them into each other, so we can set them equal to each other, or we can use substitution or elimination. I guess that's what subbing them into each other would be, substitution. Um, so I'm just going to write them over top of each other. 2x minus y plus z minus 1 equals 0 and x plus y plus z minus 6 equals 0. So what I'm looking for is if I look at my coefficients in front of x, my coefficients in front of y, and my coefficients in front of z, I want at least one of them to be the same number. So in front of my x's I have a 2 and a 1. They're not the same. In front of my y's I have a negative 1 and a 1. That could work. And in front of my z's I have a 1 and a 1. Also good. So I just need one of the pairs to be the same. So we've got y's and z's both the same. Okay, so let's just subtract the equations because then yeah, I'll eliminate shh, then I'll eliminate my z's. So 2x minus x will equal x. Negative y minus y will be negative 2y z minus z will be gone, negative 1 take away negative 6 will be positive 5 equals 0. Okay, so I've um, 
narrowed it down to two unknowns, but it's kind of impossible for me to solve for x, y, and z since I only have two equations with three unknowns. We need at least like three equations if we have three unknowns. So that's fine. So we it, that makes sense anyways. So we shouldn't be able to find an exact value for x, y, and z because if we could, that would mean they intersect in a point. And they don't. They intersect in a line. So what we're going to do is just set a variable equal to our parameter s. So you can pick any one of these variables, x or y, and we're just going to let um, one of those variables equal s. So I'm just going to pick y. It doesn't matter. I'm picking y because x doesn't have a coefficient, so it seems easier. So I'm going to let y equal s. So you have to do this. You must let one of your variables equal a parameter when you're trying to find the intersection of two planes. Okay, so now that I know that y equals s, I can solve for x. So x is equal to 2y minus 5. Therefore, x is equal to 2s minus 5. And that's as good as I need it to be. I don't need to know exactly what s is because, yeah, I'm just solving for a vector equation. So we got y equals s, x equals 2s minus 5, and now I just need to solve for z. So I can pick any equation and just sub in my x and my y. So I'm going to pick the bottom one x plus y plus z minus 6 equals 0. I'm trying to solve for z, so I'll isolate z equals negative x minus y plus 6. And I'll sub in my x, so 2s minus 5, and I'll sub in my y, which is s, my, or plus 6. So z will equal negative 2s plus 5 minus s plus 6. So if I collect my s terms, that's negative 3s plus 16. Okay, sorry, you know what? I messed up here. Haha, -ha, I don't know if you caught that. But I multiplied that 5 by 2 because I was just picturing the 2 being outside the brackets, but it was not just a negative is. Sorry. So I did that wrong. Okay, so negative 2s minus 5 just becomes negative 2s plus 5, not 10. Sorry about that. Minus s plus 6. Okie dokie. So that makes it negative 3s plus 11. Okay, sorry. Lisa caught my mistake. Okay, so what we just created was our parametric equations for x, y, and z. So I'm just going to rewrite them on top of each other. So we've created our parametric equations. So they are x equals 2s minus 5, y equals s, and z equals negative 3s plus 11. So those are our parametric ones. If we wanted to switch that to a vector equation, um, then we know first we put our point and then we put our direction vector and we get our point from all the constants. So this is a constant, this one doesn't have a constant, and this is 11. So our point would be negative 5, 0, since y doesn't have a constant, and z, the constant is 11. And then our direction vector is all the coefficients in front of s, so 2, 1, negative 3. 2, 1, negative 3. So that's the vector equation of our line. So therefore those two planes intersect in a line and that's the equation of the line. Um, okay, so if your planes don't intersect, then an equation for that would be something like this. So plane 1 could be 2x minus 6y plus 4z minus 7 equals 0. And plane 2 would be 3x minus 9y plus 6z minus 2 equals 0. So there's plane 1 and plane 2. So if I'm going to compare their normal vectors, I've got 2, negative 6, and 4. And then I'll check out this normal vector is 3, negative 9, 6. 
So to me, that looks, ooh, they could have a scalar multiple that makes them the same. And I think that scalar multiple is 1.5. So it looks like if I multiply the first normal by 1.5, it's going to equal the second normal. So that's just saying if you take all of these numbers and times them by 1.5, they'll equal the second normal, which means it's a scalar multiple, which means these planes must be parallel or coincident. So they could be parallel and like not intersect each other, or they could be coincident and in intersect each other infinite number of times. So to figure out which it is. Um, we could try solving our equations or you could look at your constant terms and see if they have the same relationship. Okay, can we multiply the first one by 1.5 to equal 2? No, I don't think so. So since our constants don't have the same relationship as our normals, I'm going to say that they're um, parallel, there's no solution, there's separate planes. Another strategy you could take is you could multiply, you could try to make a coefficient the same. So I could multiply this equation by 1.5 um, if I wanted to, to try to make the coefficients the same. And then once I did that, if I subtracted the equations or added them, like you should get something that doesn't even make sense, you know, like negative 17 equals zero or whatever it is. I didn't do the math. So you should up with you should end up with like some kind of thing that doesn't make sense. Okay. Cool. Hope that video helps.